Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dozier. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. What's up guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com and it is that time of the month again. What's in my soccer bag for April 2017? Now I know you guys enjoy the What's in My Soccer Bag series. If you do, be sure to support the video with a like. And I see a lot of you guys commenting, asking for budget variations of what's in my bag. I've done a few in the past, but they were a long time ago. I just wanted to let you guys know that I have more on the way very, very soon. So stay tuned to the channel, subscribe if you aren't already so you don't miss them. And again, if you enjoy this series, support it with a like. With that said, what this series is all about, for those that don't know, is highlighting all of the best products that I found myself using throughout the previous month. Not necessarily all at the same time, but a compilation of products that I fill up a soccer bag with this includes apparel, equipment, as well as footwear. I tell you what I like, I tell you about each individual item and why I picked it. And of course, all of these items you can purchase for yourself by clicking the very first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the monthly What's In My Soccer Bag page, where you'll find all of the items in today's video in the form of individual Buy It Now links with SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to purchase them for yourself. So if you see something in today's video that you're interested in, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And without further ado, let's get into the what's in my soccer bag video for April, 2017. All right, so here is a look at the bag of goodies. And as you can see, it's a different bag than what I was using last month. This is the Under Armour Striker Backpack. They do make a defense and midfield variation as well. So don't worry if you don't play striker. Nonetheless, $60 retail on this guy, not the cheapest thing in the world. It's available in a couple different colors, this being the Royal Blue variation. And it's everything you could want in a soccer specific backpack. It's made from a nice textile material, very rugged, very durable. It's got the weatherproof material on the bottom as well. So if you put the bag in wet grass or even if it rains a little bit, your stuff's not gonna get instantly wet which is really nice. It's got some very rugged zippers on it, which is always good to have. It's got the big central compartment, a padded laptop compartment, a top piece right here with a little pocket where you can put your keys or your phone or something like that. Obviously the big ball pouch on the front, which I always like to have, that's really, really handy. The side pocket and then the other side pocket actually has an internal liner where you can actually put your shoes and keep them separate from everything else on the inside of the bag so it doesn't get all dirty. And then of course you have your straps on the back with the padding and everything, as you would expect from a high-end backpack. Plus, I think it looks pretty cool with the embroidered Under Armour branding there and the neon yellow accents on the zippers. So overall, very good backpack. That's enough about that though. Let's actually take a look at the ball here on the front since it's right here in the pouch. Easy access, of course. Here is the CR7 branded limited edition Nike Ordem 4 match ball. So basically, just as this is just the regular Ordem 4, which is what you'll find as the Premier League match ball, the Liga match ball, as well as the Serie A match ball in Italy. Um, but with the CR7 Chapter 4 Forge for Greatness color. So it's this light blue kind of metallic gray and orange color scheme with the CR7 logos, the glittery swoosh. It's a cool idea for a match ball. And if you want something a little bit different, something that most people are not gonna have, this is definitely an Ordem 4 that you may wanna, be, may wanna pick up. Or if you're just a collector and you wanna have a match ball that matches the shoes, you don't always have that opportunity. This is definitely something to pick up. $160 retail price as it is the top end match ball. But with a lot of these high end balls, honestly, you do get what you pay for. It's one of the best performing and most durable, highest quality balls that money can buy at the moment. So definitely recommended if you can justify the price. Now, moving on to the inside of the bag, because that's what most of you guys are here to see. We have an item that I've been using for, I wanna say about two years now consistently. These are Storelli Body Shield uh, uh, slider shorts. And what's great about these is they're compression shorts, which I always like to play in. And pretty much compression shorts all feel very similar. If you're buying the 30 to $40 variations, they're pretty well the same no matter what brand you go with. What's great about these, they are a little bit more expensive at $54, but you get pour on foam inserts down the side of either leg, which provides a lot of extra protection that you wouldn't normally have with the amount of protection being something that you don't feel or see while you're wearing them, but you definitely do appreciate it, especially if you're playing on artificial grass or a really hard field and you do some sliding. This is something that's gonna save the sides of your leg uh, from really uh, bad scrapes and stuff like that. Plus, if you take bumps to the side of the leg, which you frequently do when playing, soccer is a contact sport after all, having that little bit of extra protection really does its job in terms of just taking the edge off a lot of these 
minor impact injuries, if you will, bruises, uh, dead leg, Charlie horse, whatever you want to call it. This little bit of extra padding makes a big difference. So if you're looking for some really good soccer specific uh, compression shorts, I can very strongly recommend those. As far as a training top is concerned, I went with this guy right here, which is also CR7, but not actually CR7 branded. This is the CR7 Nike squad top. Retail price on this guy is $60 US. And the reason why I say it's CR7, but not CR7 branded is it's part of the CR7 Chapter 4 collection of apparel in that it has, of course, the coloring. The blue is obviously not quite the same as the shoe, but it's a nice blue color and then it fades to black at the bottom. Then you have the orange accents on the shoulder running down the sleeve. And then the back of the shirt is just an open mesh material, which is really nice, super lightweight, very breathable. The shirt fits really nicely, but you're not going to find any CR7 logos on the shirt at all, inside or out, which is really interesting. All you'll find pretty much is the silver Nike swoosh there. Uh, on the right side of the shirt. Other than that, it's just a good looking training top. Again, fairly pricey at $60, but I think it looks good, it feels good, and you can wear it casually as well because it does look the part and the quality is definitely there. So I'll move that over to the side and I'll move on to the next item, which is the most expensive shorts that you can buy, but I really, really like these. These are the Nike Strike Aeroswift training shorts. Retail on these guys is $75 US which is very expensive, but you can get older colorway variations on sale for around $50 to $45, depending on how marked down they are. But what's great about these is this Aeroswift material that they incorporate is super thin and super, super stretchy. This is actually the newer variation. So they have actually made the shorts slightly thicker than they used to be, but this material is unbelievable. It's a little bit more fitted than what you would normally find. And if you uh, watch any of the Nike clubs on TV, so for example, Barcelona, these are the actual shorts that the players are wearing in game. So that's partially why they are so expensive. If it were the authentic shorts, they would retail for even more because of the club branding, but really nice material. The seams are all elasticated as well. Uh, and again, the shorts just move so nicely with you. Not to say that regular soccer shorts are restrictive, but when you wear these, it almost feels like you're not wearing anything at all, which I think is the main appeal. Obviously very expensive. You don't need these shorts for $75, but if you can justify them, I really think that they're the best training shorts that I've personally ever worn. Um, moving on though, we have a training top for slightly colder weather, which is still around um, or was still around last month. This is the Adidas Tango Future Training Top. So this is technically part of the Adidas Tango kind of street soccer type collection. And as you can see, it's a really nice gray color with the black and this kind of teal green, the Adidas equipment color accent right here on the top. And what's interesting about this is the bottom half is just a regular kind of thin training top type material. And then the top part is almost like a textile. It almost seems like it would be windbreaker based on how it looks, but it is more of a cloth type material. So it's not actually weatherproof or anything like that. And then of course it transitions back into the regular material at the sleeves. It's got the thumb slots, which I think is really cool. And then coming up to the front, it's a quarter zip training top. Uh, which is interesting with the built-in hood and then this interesting kind of old school type collar there that just gives it this very modern yet retro look to it. I just think it's a very cool looking training top. You have the carbon fiber detailing within the Adidas stripes going over the shoulder. And then on the back, it is actually ventilated as well. And it has a zipper so you can actually fold the shirt into itself and it ends up being a little bag which is really cool. Retail on this guy is $70 US, which honestly is not too bad considering the quality. And again, it's one of those items that you can wear for training. You can wear it casually. It's just a cool item in general. So to me, I think this is a fairly justifiable, justifiable item if you're on the market for something long sleeve. Now, moving on, we have of course some training pants. These are from Nike and these are the Nike Dry Strike pants. Retail on these guys is about $85, but you can get them on sale for around 70 and the reason why I picked them up is because they look extremely similar to the Aeroswift pants which retail for $100 versus around 70 to 85 depending on the pricing uh, at that particular time and basically they're the same thing I would say in comparison to Aeroswift the main difference here is that the material of the pants is a little bit thicker so they're going to provide a little bit more warmth but it's very very stretchy material that's kind of the main difference if you're comparing these to tiro pants from adidas which are really really popular it's got the elasticated seams here on the side it's got zipper pockets it's got the really nice waistband that's breathable and very elasticated as well but unlike tiro pants and this is something that i actually prefer it's tapered pants of course but there's no zipper there so technically you have to take your shoes off to put them on 
um, or to take them off. But um, I like the fact that there's no zipper just because it fits a little bit tighter. It's got this elasticated material around the back of the calf and you don't have the bulk of the zipper either. I always manage to hit the ball on the side of my ankle exactly where the zipper is. And, and that can be an unnecessarily painful thing. Plus I think they look pretty cool, this being the gray and black colorway variation. So those highly recommended. Again, if you're on the market for some higher end, more expensive training pants. As far as training socks go, very important piece of equipment. A lot of people don't realize how important socks are. These are the Nike Grip socks, and this is actually a slightly newer variation as well. They tweaked it ever so slightly in that the material to me just feels slightly tighter knit. Um, I wouldn't say it's a big difference in quality. The price has not changed. They're still $27.99 for the crew sock length, obviously available in a couple different colors, this being the royal blue. And essentially what Nike Grip socks are is on the base of the foot, this gray and black material that you see right here is kind of like a silicone based yarn, if that makes any sense. It has a slightly rubberized texturing to it. It's very, very subtle, but it does make a difference in terms of allowing your foot to be a little bit more secure on the inside of the shoe. It's a, pre it's a slippage prevention type system, but it still maintains the softness and kind of familiarity of just good quality socks. Uh, so if you're comparing this to true socks, those are gonna feel a lot firmer and fairly unique. I would say they're more effective in terms of the amount of grip that they provide, but I definitely feel like Nike grip socks, while not as effective, they definitely are more comfortable and feel more like normal socks, which I really value. Uh, so for me, I prefer these over true socks, but again, they're both very good products, just a little bit different in terms of what they have on offer. Also, I think the new variation does look pretty cool as well. As far as shin guards and shin guards accessories go, I picked up or I have been using these guys right here. This is, this is an awesome product. These are the Storelli Body Shield um, leg sleeve. And what's awesome about this is it's a sleeve. So obviously it's designed to hold your shin guards in place and with the sleeve aspect to it, it does have a built-in pocket there on the front. So as long as your shin guards fit inside the pocket, they can't fall through the bottom. And the sleeves tend to hold in place quite nicely with the silicone uh, kind of sticky piece on the inside at the top and bottom kind of elasticated rim of the sleeve itself. And then just like the shorts, it does have the added pour on foam down the side slash back of your leg, providing extra protection in a spot that your shin guards quite simply do not cover. These guys retail for $30 us they hold your shin guards in place they give you the extra protection and you don't have to use tape really really like them very strongly recommended if you wear shin guards without the built-in ankle protector they do make a variation with ankle protection as well by the way and then as far as shin guards go haven't changed it up haven't come across anything that even comes close to these guys these are the c6 agility third generation carbon fiber shin guards retail on these guys is 135 dollars with an sr4u coupon code so they are quite expensive, but you get what you pay for. I essentially say that these are the last pair of shin guards that you'll ever need. Aerospace grade carbon fiber, the thinnest, strongest, lightest shin guards that money can buy. They'll pretty much last you the rest of your life. And again, if you can justify the high price tag one time, they're good pretty much forever. This is a pair I've been using for a couple years now, and they pretty much still look like brand new, uh, really high quality. And again, the best of the best in pretty much every category that you can measure a pair of shin guards. And of course, they're available in different sizes and variations of coverage as well. So if you like something bigger, you can have that. If you like something smaller, they make that too. Now, as far as footwear is concerned, we're on to the last items in the bag. Not a whole lot of new stuff this month, but uh, I did find these, uh, or I did, I get to try these this last month. This is the AG Pro variation of the Nike Tiempo Legend 6, which is fairly no new. For those that don't know, they went from AGR, which featured a different sole plate and stud pattern and changed it to AG Pro, which is what we have right now. Now what's interesting about the AG Pro Legend 6 versus the firm ground variation is that this actually weighs less than the firm ground variation by about a full ounce, which is definitely noticeable on a shoe that is close to the nine ounce weight range in a size nine US. I made a video on them. I go over all the details. So definitely interesting if you haven't checked it out, but it works extremely well on artificial grass and you can get away with using it on natural grass as well. It's not too far off the variation you'll get from the firm ground stud pattern, but the studs are a little bit shorter. And obviously the sole plate is much better suited for artificial grass, which is a very uh, abrasive, hard on your shoes type surface. So these are gonna be a lot more durable if you play specifically on AG fields. But again, you can get away with using them on regular natural grass as well. Plus I'm a big fan of the Legend 6. It is my personal favorite boot out of everything out there at the moment. So those are fantastic, very strongly recommended. You can get that AG Pro stud pattern on pretty much everything from Nike at the moment as well. 
Um, and then we have another Nike boot. This is a new shoe, technically. This is the Nike Magista Opus 2 version 2. We finally did get a kind of redesigned variation of the original Opus 2 that a lot of people didn't like the look of and didn't necessarily like the feel of either. I wasn't crazy about both of those two things that I just mentioned. But with this version 2 variation, they pretty much fixed all the problems. They gave us a straight up Kangolite upper with the 3D texturing that mimics something more closely to what you get from the Magista Obra 2 with its flying it upper. This does end up feeling a lot different. Obviously, it's a low cut shoe as well. But if you were a fan of the CTR 360 Maestries before it transitioned into Magistas, this is pretty much the closest thing we got uh, or that we have or that's currently available to the previous Nike CTR 360 Maestri 3. So if you really like those, this is definitely one of those shoes that you may want to consider. The Kangolite upper is great. The shoes are comfortable. They fit really nicely. You get the new Magista stud pattern. And again, a definite improvement over the original variation of the Opus 2. That is it for April's What's in My Soccer Bag video. Again, if you saw something that you're interested in, First link down below, that'll take you to the What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with SR4U coupon codes for each individual item. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions regarding any of these items, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoy this series, want to continue seeing it happen, be sure to support the video with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.